Hi, my name is Pauline Stanley. I am a designer, artist, and illustrator, and this is the first episode of a video podcast series I am doing on creativity, art and design, uh, business, and life. So you may or may not have heard me talk about this concept in my studio vlogs. So as I was doing the studio vlogs, which were which are basically just a video to sum up what's been going on in my business lately. Um, I started thinking about how there are some topics that I go into in the blogs that I think about a lot because it's my business, it's my passion, it's my hobby. So I thought it would be interesting to go into those topics a little more um, in their own separate videos. So the first two topics I'm discussing on this series is um, sort of having to do with finding your style. One element of finding your style, I think, is do you want to do, make art or design or whatever you're doing, and do you want it to be very detailed and very representational? Do you want it to be very realistic? Or do you want it to be more abstract and stylized? Or do you want it to be more simplified versus being more detailed? So this is something I started thinking a lot about um, during the making of my last Skillshare class, which was a Skillshare class on mark making. Um, it was called Minimal Minimalist Mark Making Patterns. And the class was sort of discussing a more looser style of art. So instead of being very um, refined, very controlled, very uh, detailed. It's more of a looser style of art that allows for more play, exploration, intuition. So a lot of the class I actually found that I was sort of trying to teach the viewer or allow the viewer to be okay with not having so much control over what you were making in art. Um, so I just thought about that a lot during the class about how there's sort of these this um, dichotomy in art of whether you should be making very skilled, detailed, realistic work or if you should be more looser. I think it's a question that comes up a lot in the art world is should you be tight and controlled or should you be looser in your art? So I personally prefer um, simple and min minimalist style art. I like it to be represent. I don't mind if it's if uh, making things that are representational of other things. It doesn't always have to be completely abstract, but I like it to be uh, simplified. I don't. I don't care for. I personally don't care for making detailed representations of things in my artwork. Um, I like some details maybe, but it's more. Um, I'm more interested in the style of something or uh, the way you do something or using something, a style or something in a certain way. And also I actually don't, I mean, actually myself prefer even as an art viewer, instead of just maker, I like to have, I like to look at art that's more simplified, bolder, graphic, pared down. It feels more calming. Um, it just resonates with me more. I certainly can appreciate people that can make detailed art and that can make realistic art. I am amazed by people that can do that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking that in any way. I just think that that's something that you need to sort of think about when you're um, exploring an art style of your own is, um, do I want to learn those skills? Do I want to make this very realistic art or detailed art? Or do I like a more simplified, playful, uh, minimal approach to art. So my story when I first started doing design and um, art, it was more in products, less um, visual art. So I started doing jewelry and home goods and I really enjoyed and I was also working with um, designing products using laser cutting to make products. So it was really, I had to simplify things because that's just what the nature of that is. But I also just liked doing that anyways. So it worked out for me. 
What I loved doing was taking an icon or an idea or an actual thing and sort of figuring out how to simplify it in the most pared down way, like to, to pare it down and simplify it in the most graphic and bold way. So from there, naturally, when I started to make actual um, visual art, um, I sort of used the same concept. I liked things that were simplified. I also um, started making art and took classes in um, printmaking. So printmaking in nature is more simplified. Usually use just like a hand, like one color or just a couple colors. Um, if you're doing actually printing, of like block printing, you sometimes are just using one stamp and repeating it. Um, I really like that sort of thing. I like one color. I like repetition of one item. So that's what I st sort of started playing with at first. And um, I also uh, did a lot of work with Illustrator at first when I was designing my products. So I first, when I started making art, I was making a lot of art in Illustrator, which lends itself to a more um, crisp, clean, minimalist style. Um, and since then, I have started playing with art in different ways, but I still manage to, and I still am interested in keeping the art pared down and simplified. So going back to talking about making products, um, and it's interesting because a lot of times I would try to make something a little bit more different or I thought, oh, that design's too easy. I need to do something more with it. But really in the end, what I wanted was that very simplified pared down design. And that one was the right choice. And it's funny, I think I've heard this concept talked about in design where um, sometimes the best design is, I don't know exactly how to word it, but sometimes the best design is like the most obvious choice. Sometimes I push myself to make things more complicated, but sometimes I don't think you need to make things more complicated. What the answer is really is that you don't need to make things more complicated. Sometimes there's beauty in just the simple, simpleness of something, you know, um, if that's what you're going for. So when I was first starting to make um, visual art and I was using Illustrator or these more designy um, programs to get the ideas across, um, that's something you need to consider in finding your style is that do you want it to be more computerized? Do you want it to be more perfect? Do you like that in your art? Or do you want something to have a little bit more of a handmade feel, a little bit more um, looseness, and a little bit more imperfection? So that's sort of the route that I started going down in my art. Um, at first, I started with that very... Um, minimal um, style and then from there I kept that minimalist sort of feeling but I wanted it to be a little bit more looser and a little more per imperfect and human. Um, I really find that to be very interesting when I'm looking at work so I mean that's another big point of finding your style is thinking about what you like in other artwork and figuring out, making sure you're collecting those points of interest for yourself and then incorporating those into your own work because then you'll be proud of your own work when you start to see things in your your work that you really love, you know? Like you actually really appreciate those things in your work and in other people's work. So yeah, it's really important to just use your own taste. Um, when you're trying to figure out what is your own style, like what do you actually really like? Um, and you need to trust your own taste because you are a person just like anybody else. So if you like something, then there's a good chance that someone else will, there's an other audience for that type of thing that you like. Um, I think a big part of like the direction of where I was going with my artwork too is also and this sort of loose, imperfect thing is um, also trusting your intuition. It's sort of this concept in this class of doing things that are natural to you. So if you are working a certain way um, 
and this is just how you naturally are doing things, then maybe go with that. Maybe like don't fight that because maybe you that's that's coming from a very uh, honest place. So in the experience of making this new class, those are some of the points that I talked about, which was um, the beauty of mark making, which is just making simple marks on paper of like patterns and things that you like. But um, it's this very simple, a minimalist art form that I personally love. I think it's really cool. I add, I not only do it on its own as patterns or as art, but I also add a lot of it to my artwork, um, like layer it on top or um, mix it together in a composition, just like these marks or patterns. Um, why I love them is they're just handmade, they're imperfect, they are intuitive, they're playful, um, and I just really, I've just really grown to enjoy that style of art. So I actually still do sometimes, you know, it's really easy to achieve these things with things like watercolor because watercolor is almost like you have to give up control a lot of times and you have to let the, the watercolor and the paint do its own thing. Um, so that's what the beauty of that medium. And I really love it for that reason. But I also make digital art and I draw on my iPad. And when I'm doing that, um, I almost take the concepts I used in Illustrator, but I apply them to the iPad and I use the app Procreate to make a lot of art. Um, and I sort of like, just sort of like molding the art and like judging it out instead of like perfectly making the paths and the lines like you would in a computer like and you would in a um, software program like illustrator um i like to sort of use um the program on the ipad like and use my own hands making these marks maybe with a little bit of smoothing or whatever with the aid of um the software, but in general, I like to still try to find, let it find that um, human, earthy, imperfect element. And I do that a lot by just not trying to make things perfect, just like eyeballing things a lot of times, and also like using texture um, and things like that to give it more warmth and more of a handmade feel. I also find that it's um, harder sometimes with digital art to let go because when you are making art with paint or traditional medium, you often have like your one chance. I mean, you can do it over and over again, but it's less easy to do things over and over again. So you do these things and it's like, okay, that's what it is, we're working with that. When you're working digitally, you can undo, 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 repeat, repeat, repeat until you get like the perfect mark. And um, I even, when I'm working digitally, try to not do things again and again and again and again, and sort of um, try to be more intentional about going with those first few attempts instead of repeating something over and over and over again. And I also, regardless of what style and what medium I use, try to make sure I am doing that um, working intuitively and going with those initial attempts. And I really love to try to do things in a more naive, playful way when I'm making art instead of this very um, considerate, considered, <laughs> intentional way of making art. I mean, sometimes I still do that, don't get me wrong. I think there's definitely a place for tight, controlled, um, artwork and I think that it's very beautiful. I just almost sometimes doing it because it almost feels better to make art in a more playful and like less serious way. And that's actually a topic I'd like to talk about some other time too is um, going with the art that makes you feel better when you're doing it. You know, sometimes it's not all about the end result. Sometimes it's more about the um, actual, you know, process, like the actual process of making the art. And sometimes it makes sense to make decisions about what kind of art you're going to make 
by what makes you feel the best. Like, what do you enjoy doing the best? So um, that's something to think about too when you're also trying to work out your style and find your style. It's, it feels better sometimes to just not agonize about making something perfect and to really just love those first attempts at making something. Like those first initial attempts sometimes feel more honest and more true to who you are. And this concept is actually um, talked about in a podcast. Um, I believe it was a company called... They make craft kits and they, one of the artists they were using, it's, um, I can't remember the name, but I will try to find that. And I love their work. She said something along the lines of when I make a piece, she does a lot of uh, fabric design and block printing. And she said, when I make a piece, I sometimes go with like the first thing. And I just thought that was so freeing to hear her say that and sort of gave me permission as another artist and I really enjoy her work to, and I also love that. And it made me think, oh, okay, you really can just do that. Like, it's okay if it's not perfect. And that was her whole thing was that it's okay to do it. Sometimes you just do the first thing you do and you go with that. And sometimes it's very, there's so much beauty in doing that. Okay, so thank you for joining me on um, this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will, I plan to do more of these. And if there's something you'd like to discuss or if you have an idea of something you'd be interested in discussing in creativity, art, design, business, let me know. Um, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts or, or whatever thing or other things you'd like to hear me cover in these in this series. So um, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, it really helps the channel and thank you so much. And until next time, hope you all are having a great day. I'll see you again soon.